everyone, and welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco, and I'm Erica. And today with Erica, we have an upper intermediate lesson. That's right, an upper intermediate lesson that's a little bit strange. It's a little bit strange, but it's a real English lesson because that's what we give you here at English Pod. So in today's lesson, we've got a lot of really great language for you. We've got language to help you to gossip better. Gossip. Why don't you、uh, explain it a little bit, just in case? Okay. So if I Gossip. I maybe share news or information about other people with my friends. Like I might say something like, "Marco, did you see what happened in Chinese Pod today? You'll <laughs> never guess what I saw." <laughs> exactly. That's gossip. And we also have language today to describe things. To describe strange things. Strange things. All right. So let's take a look at our vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. So in our vocabulary preview, we'll look at a few important words that will help you to understand the dialogue a little bit better. Exactly, and the first word is weird. 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 Now this is a common word you probably hear all the time and in a lot of different situations. So we wanted to explain it today. Yeah,、uh, this word just means strange. It's strange. Yeah, weird person is a strange person. Exactly. But the thing about this word is, if you are a young person, let's say under the age of thirty-five, you'll probably use it about a hundred times a day. <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. It's just such a good sounding word. Weird. It is. Okay, but the thing is that even though it's probably more commonly used in American English, it's still widely used for British English as well. Yeah, that's true. So, but maybe in British English you would say something like odd. It's odd. Yeah, that's more common. Okay, let's look at our second word: housewarming gift. Housewarming gift. Housewarming gift. Housewarming gift. Now this is a cultural thing. It's really common in North America to give a housewarming gift to someone. Yeah, if I move into a new house, maybe some of my friends or family will bring a gift over to. Make my house a little bit more beautiful. So something like a photo frame, or or maybe a plant, or sometimes even like maybe a basket of pastries or something.、Oh, okay.、Well, yeah. I've never gotten one of those because、really? I don't have a home. Oh, <laughs> where do you live? On the street? <laughs> well, I don't have a、uh, my own home, so I have never gotten one of those. Okay. Okay, so we're ready now to listen to our dialogue. So we've got two housewives who are gossiping about what's going on in the neighborhood, and let's listen to what happens. Oh, I don't know if you've heard, but someone moved into that old house down the road. Yeah, I know. I met the owner of the house yesterday as he was moving in. His name is Armand. Really? What's he like? You have to fill me in. Actually, he's a bit strange. I don't know. I've just got a bad feeling about him. Really? Why? Well, yesterday I brought over a housewarming gift, but Armand started acting really weird, and then he practically kicked me out. I tried to sort of peek into his house, but everything was so dark inside that I couldn't really get a good look. The whole thing really creeped me out. Well, you'll never guess what I saw this morning. A delivery truck pulled into his driveway, and it dropped off a long rectangular box. It almost looked like a coffin. You see? Why would he? Hello, ladies. <gasps> Armand.、Oh, you scared the heck out of me. This is my friend Doris. A pleasure to meet you. If you're not doing anything tonight, I'd like to have you both for dinner. I mean, <laughs> I'd like to have you both over for dinner. Ooh, that guy seems kind of weird. <laughs> you can hear his voice is like a weird guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our language takeaway and look at some of these great words. Language takeaway. So our language takeaway focuses on several words from the dialogue that we feel are really important for you to know. Exactly, and we have four of them for you today. Why don't we look at the first one? Okay, so the first word is a bad feeling. Bad feeling. A bad feeling. A bad feeling. So we've got a few examples that will help you to understand how this phrase works. Example one. I don't like Kelly's new boyfriend. I've got a bad feeling about him. 
Example two. It's so dark. We shouldn't be out here. I've got a bad feeling about this. Example three. I've got a bad feeling about this trip. I feel like something is going to happen. Maybe we shouldn't go. Okay, so basically, you think something bad is gonna happen. Yeah, you have a sort of uncomfortable feeling. Okay, that makes sense. I have a bad feeling about something. Exactly. Okay, let's look at our second word now. Kicked me out. Kicked me out. Kicked me out. Kicked me out. So when someone kicks you out, it's they force you to leave. You don't want to leave, but they force you to. Yeah, leave. Marco, have you ever kicked someone out of your class? Um, yes, I have. I really? Th- yeah. If you misbehave in my class, you're kicked out. So you're pretty strict, huh? <laughs> well, sometimes I am. Okay. Um, okay. Also, maybe you've kicked your husband out of bed. Mm, I might have done that <laughs> once or twice before. <laughs> we'll have to ask him. I'm sure he has. <laughs> All right. So that's what it means. You force someone to leave the house, leave the class, leave the bed. So kicked out of class, kicked out of the house, kicked out of bed. Exactly. Great. Let's look at our third word now. Creeped me out. Creeped me out. Creeped me out. Creeped me out. Now this is a really common phrase. I like this phrase a lot, and we've got some examples for you to listen to to help you understand this word a little bit better. Example one. Shh! Did you hear that? Oh, I think I saw something. Stop it! You're really creeping me out. Example two. This place really creeps me out. Let's get out of here. All right. Well, I have a confession to make. I'm kind of creeped out by clowns. You are. Yes. I don't know. They're just creepy. They're they scare me. I don't really? Yes. Yeah, so what is it about clowns that scare you so much? I don't know. They're just white faces and weird paint. I don't know. It's just creepy. And the way they laugh. Oh, I don't know. No. Maybe you had a bad experience with clowns <laughs> as a child. Probably. I watched the scary movie about clowns or something. Yeah. All right. So creeped me out basically means made me feel uncomfortable. Yes. It scares you. Yeah. Well, speaking of being scared, we have our final word for language takeaway, and it is scared the heck out of me. You scared the heck out of me. Scared the heck out of me. You got really scared. Yeah, I think this is a quite common way of saying you really, really scared me. Yeah. Okay, we're ready to listen to our dialogue again. Now, try and see if you can catch all these phrases that we just talked about. Oh, I don't know if you've heard, but someone moved into that old house down the road. Yeah, I know. I met the owner of the house yesterday as he was moving in. His name is Armand. Really? What's he like? You have to fill me in. Actually, he's a bit strange. I don't know. I've just got a bad feeling about him. Really? Why? Well, yesterday I brought over a housewarming gift, but Armand started acting really weird, and then he practically kicked me out. I tried to sort of peek into his house, but everything was so dark inside that I couldn't really get a good look. The whole thing really creeped me out. Well, you'll never guess what I saw this morning. A delivery truck pulled into his driveway, and it dropped off a long rectangular box. It almost looked like a coffin. You see, why would he? Hello, ladies. Ah, Armand, you scared the heck out of me. This is my friend Doris. A pleasure to meet you. If you are not doing anything tonight. I would like to have you both for dinner. I mean, I would like to have you both over for dinner. You know, one of the things I really like about this dialogue is there's a lot of great phrases that will help you to gossip. 
That's a good observation. So I think it's time for Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. In Fluency Builder, we take a simple phrase or a simple word you already know and show you how to express the same idea a little bit more naturally. Okay, great. So let's take a look at our first item for Fluency Builder. So when you gossip with somebody, you often tell them news or information that they don't know already. And you might start by saying, did you know that? Or you can say, did you hear? Yeah, both of those phrases are perfectly fine. But if you want to sound a little bit more native-like when you're gossiping, you might try out this phrase from the dialogue. I don't know if you've heard. I don't know if you've heard. Yeah, that's a really good phrase. You're saying exactly the same thing, but in a really natural way. It's a great one for gossiping. So, Marco, <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, but Chinese pod is up to some pretty crazy things. <laughs> See, that's exactly how you would use that phrase. So now let's take a look at our second item. Now, when you're gossiping, you want information. That's right. So you might say, oh, tell me about it. Or something like, give me the details. Yeah, and again, both of these examples are perfectly fine, but when you're gossiping, you might want to try something like this. You have to fill me in. You have to fill me in. Fill me in. Yeah, that's, that's what I would say. Fill me in. You know, give me the details. Fill me in. Fill me in on today's gossip. Okay, so let's take a look at our third item. Now, if you have some juicy, gossipy news... And you want to start up a conversation, you might use this phrase here. Well, you'll never guess what I saw this morning. Well, you'll never guess what I saw this morning. That's a really good phrase. You can change it a little bit. You can say, you'll never guess who I saw. Or you'll never guess what I heard. Exactly. Very and excellent gossip phrases. <laughs> We're teaching you how to gossip because that's real English. People really do it, so you got to know the language for it. <laughs> All right, so enough of our gossip. I think it's time for us to listen to the dialogue one last time. Oh, I don't know if you've heard, but someone moved into that old house down the road. Yeah, I know. I met the owner of the house yesterday as he was moving in. His name is Armand. Really? What's he like? You have to fill me in. Actually, he's a bit strange. I don't know. I've just got a bad feeling about him. Really? Why? Well, yesterday I brought over a housewarming gift, but Armand started acting really weird, and then he practically kicked me out. I tried to sort of peek into his house, but everything was so dark inside that I couldn't really get a good look. The whole thing really creeped me out. Well, you'll never guess what I saw this morning. A delivery truck pulled into his driveway and it dropped off a long rectangular box. It almost looked like a coffin. You see? Why would he... Hello, ladies. <gasps> Armand! Oh, you scared the heck out of me. This is my friend Doris. A pleasure to meet you. If you're not doing anything tonight, I'd like to have you both for dinner. I mean, <laughs> I'd like to have you both over for dinner. Okay, Marco, I have a true story for you. Is it kind of like a creepy story? It is a creepy story indeed. Is it a true story? No, it's really true. Okay. So when I was young, I used to live in the country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the country, all of the neighbors know each other. It's a small community, so everyone knows what's happening all the time. Okay. And there was some gossip going on in our community about a guy who lived at the end of the road. Mm -hmm. And he was the owner of a car wrecking yard. So a place where you take old broken down cars and take the parts apart to sell. Right. And anyway, a scrapyard. Yeah, a scrapyard. All right. Okay, so, you know, he had a wife and a couple of kids, um, and suddenly his wife disappeared. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and no one knew what happened or anything. And so several years pass, and suddenly the police start coming in and start investigating this guy and start digging up all of the land around his property. And I guess, I don't know what they're doing, but I think they were looking for the wife's body. Wow. And did they find it? I don't know. I moved away. 
Ah, oh, such a great story, but we don't know how it ends. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> well, we can leave it up to the imagination of our listeners. Exactly. Maybe they were looking for an old car. An old car buried in the ground. I don't think so. <laughs> All right. That's a true story. Real English, real stories. You, you heard go. it first here on English Pod. <laughs> All right. So we want to hear your comments and suggestions about this topic. I bet a lot of our listeners also have creepy stories, maybe ghost stories, maybe, I don't know, different types of、uh, weird stories. So you guys should definitely log on to English Pod and share them with us. That's right. Go to EnglishPod.com and in the comments section of the web, Website, tell us your creepy stories. And we're going to pick out the best story as the story of the week. We'll、uh, announce it in our This Just In podcast. Yes, so we want to hear all your juicy stories and gossip, maybe as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, it's time for us to go. So be sure to listen to us next time. But until then, it's bye bye. Bye. <laughs> The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Phrase used to introduce a piece of information. I don't know if you heard. Tell me about it. Fill me in. A sense or feeling that something bad is going to happen. A bad feeling. Strange, unusual. Weird. Make or force someone to leave when they don't want to. Kick out. Make me feel uncomfortable and a bit scared. Creep me out. Phrase used to introduce a piece of news. You'll never guess. Cause someone to feel a lot of fear. Scare the heck out of me. Strange or unusual. Bizarre. Strange or scary. Causing people to feel nervous and afraid. Creepy. A dead person who drinks the blood of living people. Vampire. Phrase used to introduce a piece of gossip. Have you heard? Phrase used to introduce an interesting or surprising piece of information. Guess what? Let's try that faster. A dead person who drinks the blood of living people. Vampire. Phrase used to introduce a piece of news. You'll never guess. Tell me about it. Fill me in. Phrase used to introduce a piece of gossip. Have you heard? Strange or scary, causing people to feel nervous and afraid. Creepy. Phrase used to introduce an interesting or surprising piece of information. Guess what? Strange, unusual. Weird. Make me feel uncomfortable and a bit scared. Creep me out. Cause someone to feel a lot of fear. Scare the heck out of me. Make or force someone to leave when they don't want to. Kick out. A sense or feeling that something bad is going to happen. A bad feeling. Strange or unusual. Bizarre. Phrase used to introduce a piece of information. 
I don't know if you heard. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Weird. Last night, I kept hearing a really weird sound. I don't know what it was. Weird. Our teacher seems a bit weird, don't you think? Weird. The weirdest thing happened to me yesterday. A pack of monkeys stole my car keys. A bad feeling. I've got a bad feeling about Kelly's new boyfriend. I don't think he's a good guy. A bad feeling. I have a bad feeling about this sales strategy. I think it's going to fail. A bad feeling. I've got a bad feeling about this trip. I think we should stay home. Kick out. If you don't be quiet, I'm going to kick you out of this meeting. Kick out. We got kicked out of the restaurant at midnight because they were closing. Kick out. That's it. I'm kicking you out of class. Go stand in the hall. Creep me out. This old house is so scary. It's really creeping me out. Creep me out. I watched The Exorcist last night. That movie really creeps me out. Creep me out. The last time I walked home alone at night, I really got creeped out. I almost got in a car accident yesterday. That scared the heck out of me. Don't wear that vampire mask. You're scaring the heck out of the baby. I'm terrified of clowns. They scare the heck out of me. I don't know if you've heard, but Susan and John are breaking up. I don't know if you've heard, but the new marketing manager is single. I don't know if you've heard, but Maurice quit his job yesterday. Fill me in. I can't go to today's meeting, but can you fill me in on the important details? Fill me in. How was your date? You have to fill me in. Fill me in. Sarah missed her class yesterday, but I filled her in on the homework assignment. You'll never guess what I heard. Peter and Anna are getting married. You'll never guess who I saw yesterday. Bill, my boyfriend from high school. You'll never guess what Sandra told me. She's moving to Alaska. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to English Pod. My name's Erica. And I'm Marco. 
So Marco, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, and I'm really looking forward to our lesson because we're going to the eye doctor today. Okay, so we've got an elementary lesson about going to the eye doctor. Yes. Well, let's get started then with our vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. We have three words today in our vocabulary preview. All three words come from our dialogue. Our first word is struggle. 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 So, Marco, when I struggle to do something, what does that mean? It means it's difficult. It means that you have a hard time, so you can't really do it very quickly. So it, you have to try really hard. You have to try really hard. Yeah, to do something that's difficult. Yes. Okay. Our next word is blurry. 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 B l u r r y. Blurry. Whenever something is blurry, you can't really see it well. It's not clear. Right. That's right. Everything will be blurry.、Mm -hmm. Okay. And our final word is prescription. 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 Often, when you go to the doctor and you need some medicine, he writes out a prescription. Right, a little paper that says all the medicine that you need, and then you can go to the drugstore and buy it. Exactly.、Mm -hmm. Okay, so those three words you'll hear in today's dialogue, and I think it's time we listen to the dialogue. Hello, Arthur. What seems to be the problem? Pretty dark. Well, I think I might need glasses. I'm getting headaches, and I really struggle to see things that are far away. But I've always had 20/20 vision. Hmm, sounds like you might be farsighted. Okay, then cover your left eye and read the chart in front of you. Hmm, X, E, R, three, uh, question mark, and I can't quite make out the other symbol, but I think it's the peace sign. Wow, Martha, you're as blind as a bat. Yeah, I know. My vision is really blurry at times. Okay then, head over to the other room and pick out some frames while I fill out your prescription. Thanks, Doc. Arthur, that's the bathroom. Well, this guy really has poor vision, hey. <laughs> Well, actually, you know what? I've walked into the bathroom, the men's bathroom, actually, <laughs> instead of the women's bathroom, and that's not because I wasn't wearing my glasses. It's because you weren't paying attention. That's true. <laughs> okay, let's take a look today at our language takeaway. Language takeaway. The first word on our language takeaway for today is twenty twenty vision. Twenty twenty vision. Twenty twenty vision. If I have twenty twenty vision. It means that you have perfect vision, which I do not have. <laughs> no, me neither. So I I usually wear glasses as well. Yeah. But yeah, people that have twenty twenty vision don't need glasses. They can see clearly and perfectly. And perfectly. Yeah. Next word is far sighted. Far sighted. Far sighted. Far sighted. So if I'm far sighted, I can't see very well, right? So if you're far sighted, you can see things that are near. So you can see things that are far away, right? But things that are close are blurry. Okay.、And、the opposite would be nearsighted, and which is you can see things that are close well, but not far. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> far sighted and nearsighted. Okay. So our next word is make out. Make out. Make out. Make out. Make out. That's kind of a funny little phrase, and let's listen to a few examples of this phrase so we can understand how it's used. Example one. I can't make out what this says. The writing is too small. Example two. If you look carefully, you can almost make out a few of the stars in the sky. Example three. Can you see what's written on the sign there? No, I can't quite make it out. Okay, so basically, make out is to see clearly. Exactly.、Mm -hmm. Make out to see. Okay, and our last word for language takeaway today is blind as a bat. Blind as a bat. Blind as a bat. 
So this is a really funny sounding expression, one of these weird English idioms. Yeah, it's a really common expression that just means that you can't see. Exactly. So it's not like you actually are blind, right? But you just really can't see very well. Okay. All right, we saw four great words today in our language takeaway. Now, I think we can listen to our dialogue another time. But this time, it's going to be slower, so we can pick up all these great words that we just talked about. Hello, Arthur. What seems to be the problem? Hey, Doc. Well, I think I might need glasses. I'm getting headaches, and I really struggle to see things that are far away. But I've always had 20-20 vision. Sounds like you may be farsighted. Okay, then. Cover your left eye and read the chart in front of you. Mm, X, E, R, 3, uh, question mark. And I can't quite make out the other symbol, but I think it's a peace sign. Wow. Arthur, you're as blind as a bat. Yeah, I know. My vision is really blurry at times. Okay, then. Head on over to the other room and pick out some frames while I fill out your prescription. Thanks, Doc. Arthur, that's the bathroom. All right, great stuff on our dialogue. And with this, we can start now with putting it together. Putting it together. So we saw a couple of useful phrases in this dialogue, and I think we can show you how to use these phrases in a few different ways. Right. Um, the first one that we have today is what seems to be. So we heard in the dialogue, the doctor said... What seems to be the problem? We can use this same expression in a number of different ways. Let's listen. Example one. What seems to be the problem? Example two. What seems to be the matter? Example 3. What seems to be the trouble? Okay, so with these examples, we can see how we can use the phrase, what seems to be, in many different ways. Yeah, it's a great way of asking, what's the problem? So now, let's take a look at another phrase. We heard in the dialogue, the doctor said, head on over to the other room. Right. And with this phrase, head on, we can combine it with other prepositions to indicate another place. Exactly. Let's hear three examples. Example one. Head on in. Example two. Head on out. Example three. Head on up. Okay, so for example, we can say, head on into the house, it's gonna rain soon. Or we can say, hey guys, let's head on out to the park. Mm -hmm. Or I can also say, head on up to my room. I'll be there in a second. Great. Those are some cool phrases. Right. And they're really useful. So why don't we listen to our dialogue and maybe we'll hear them again. Hello, Arthur. What seems to be the problem? Hey, Doc. Well, I think I might need glasses. I'm getting headaches, and I really struggle to see things that are far away. But I've always had 20-20 vision. Hmm, sounds like you might be farsighted. Okay, then, cover your left eye and read the chart in front of you. Hmm, X, E, R, 3, uh, question mark, and I can't quite make out the other symbol, but I think it's the peace sign. Wow, Arthur, you're as blind as a bat. Yeah, I know. My vision is really blurry at times. Okay, then. Head over to the other room and pick out some frames while I fill out your prescription. Thanks, Doc. Arthur, that's the bathroom. Okay, so talking about going to the eye doctor today, I have a question for our listeners. A challenge a for challenge. the listeners. What's it called when you can't distinguish colors. So like when you can't tell the difference between red and blue and green. Right. So what is that condition called? 
So there's like a technical term. We want the technical term. <laughs> we want the technical term. So we'll be looking for it on our comments page, and be sure to, if you know the answer, post it at EnglishPod.com. Also, if you have questions about today's lesson or any other lesson, please come and visit our website and uh, ask us. Yeah, we hope to see you there. But until then, it's goodbye. goodbye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. To arrange. An agreement to meet someone at a particular time. Appointment. Not busy. Willing to talk to someone. Available. Check again. Double check. Having no available place or time. Booked solid. Be okay. Work for you. Planned at a specific time. Scheduled. Not okay. No good. Let's try that faster. To arrange. Be okay. Work for you. Not okay. No good. Be okay. Work for you. To arrange. Be okay. Work for you. Check again. Double check. Be okay. Work for you. Check again. Double check. An agreement to meet someone at a particular time. Appointment. Check again. Double check. To arrange. Be okay. Work for you. Check again. Double check. Planned at a specific time. Scheduled. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Appointment. Can you make an appointment for me to see the doctor? Booked solid. I can't get a hotel room. They're booked solid until after the new year. Double check. I thought that I sent that email already, but let me double check. Available. I am available at three. Let's meet then. Work for you. I'm free at ten. Does that work for you? No good. Tuesday's no good. I have meetings all day. Appointment. Can you make an appointment for me to see the doctor? Booked solid. I can't get a hotel room. They're booked solid until after the new year. Double check. I thought that I sent that email already, but let me double check. No good. Tuesday's no good. I have meetings all day.